Yeah, I'm not quite sure I like this. Can you bring it in just a little, little bit? No, no, bring it in. Bring it in. Yeah, no, 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 that's too far, too far, too far. Take, take. <sighs> Man. Welcome to episode number 43 of the Langell Show. My name is Brian Langell and this is a sunny yet cooling off Thursday evening. So i got some stuff I want to talk about in this episode. I don't really want to waste a lot of time because I have a lot to cover, so let's get into it. First off, I don't know if you've noticed it lately or not, but uh, KFC has announced something new. They're going in a bit of a different direction and no, it's not so much in the health food kick like everyone else is going. They've decided in honor of the Olympics they're going to offer Asian chicken. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Uh, I went there on Monday when it debuted and I figured I'd check out what they offer and they offer now Asian popcorn chicken, Asian chicken snackers, a uh, couple other things. They come with chopsticks now. Uh, nothing that I saw there really interested me so I figured, you know what, I'm gonna turn around, I'm just gonna order my normal three-piece meal. Let's see whether or not I can get it Asianized. So they said, yeah, sure, that's no problem. Just pull up to the first window. So I pulled up, and they gave me my meal, and everything was great. And they said, uh, oh, yeah, we almost forgot. Here's your Szechuan. And I was like, my what? And they're like, yeah, your, your, your Asian Szechuan uh, powder. You just pour this on your chicken. Uh, you might want to go a little bit easy with it at first, because it's a little spicy. And I was like, okay. So I got back to work, and I opened up my, my Asian chicken, and... All it was is it was normal KFC, and the little package of Szechuan is what you sprinkle on top of it if you want to have it Asian. Now, I kind of figured if they were going to be promoting this that it wasn't a do-it-yourself kit. I thought that if I was ordering Asian KFC that I was going to get, you know, some sort of sauce on it or some sort of thing that made it actually different than normal KFC. I didn't expect Shake and Bake to pour on my chicken there and, and try it out. The the little packet that you, you have to pour on yourself doesn't really work for me because it's not evenly dispersed. It's like clumps of it here and there. It's I'll tell you what it's like. It's You ever get the popcorn that you can put your own flavoring on on top of it, like the sour cream and onion or the white cheddar, etc., etc.? It's like that, only really spicy. It wasn't really quite what I was expecting, you know, I was expecting, you know, an Asian-style chicken. I'll be honest, I don't exactly know what an Asian-style chicken is, but it's what I was expecting anyway. But this wasn't it, and the fact that I have to do it myself loses major, major marks. So, uh, that's my review of the Asian KFC now. You guys can check it out if you want, feel free, you know, leave your comments down below. I just come to realize that I seem to talk about fast food a lot. I've done it in four, three of the last four episodes, so I'm going to take a hiatus from that, and I'm not going to mention anything fast food based to at least episode 55. So if you tune in for my, my local restaurant reviews, you're going to be disappointed for the next little bit, but sorry. Anyway, so a few episodes ago, I made reference to the iPhone being released in Canada. I don't know if you've seen it yet or not. Then again, yeah, you probably have. It's the most viewed episode of all time. So I made reference to the iPhone being released in Canada, and I made note of the fact that I wasn't getting one. And that hasn't changed. I'm still not getting an iPhone. But something interesting that I did say in that episode was the fact that if anyone wanted to give me one, I'd be glad to beta test it for them. Anyway, if any of you guys out there want to supply me with a phone, you know, to beta test, I would gladly do that. But as it stands right now... See, that's exactly what I said. And uh, apparently that happened, just not to me. As you guys know, I've become a big fan of Twitter lately. I've been on Twitter now, I post my updates, I tell people what I'm doing, etc., etc. And a couple people that I follow include Kevin Rose and Alex Albrecht from Dig Nation. And they had a thing going for a while on Dig where they said that if enough people followed them on Twitter, that they'd pick someone at random and they'd give them an iPhone. And I thought that was a great idea. That wasn't the reason I was following them, but I figured, hey, you know, I mean, if I'm going to get on the chance of winning an iPhone, why not, right? So, anyway, I've been following them. I've, I've read all their updates. I Everything's cool. That's what I use Twitter for. And the other day at work, I decided, you know what? I'm just not going to use Twitter today. I'm, I'm not going to post what I'm doing. I'm not going to follow anyone else. I'm just going to, you know... Go a day without Twitter and see what it's like. 
and as you can probably guess by the fact I'm talking about it here, that's the day Kevin Rose decided to give away an iPhone. So I get home that night and I logged on to Twitter and it came up and it said, uh, you know, updates uploading. So I was like, alright, cool. So I'm reading what Alex did and I'm reading what Kevin did. And then Kevin pops up with one that says, I'm giving away an iPhone in 10 minutes. Twitter me with, give me an iPhone, thanks, or something along those lines. And the next one was, we have our winner, congratulations. And I'm thinking, oh my god, of all days I could possibly think of not to be on Twitter, I picked the one day where Kevin Rose is giving away an iPhone, and I'm nowhere to be seen. Way to go, Angel. That's awesome. So now I'm going to have to rely on pop-up ads and spam banners to try to win an iPhone that way. But, you know, it, to be honest with you, it's, it's, it's not even the price of the iPhone that bothers me. If I wanted to get one, I could go out and get one. $299 for the 16 gig or $199 for the, for the 8 gig. Amazing price. That's not the problem. It's the $3,000 after that that you pay for service fees and, and your monthly thing for three years. That's the killer for me. If it didn't cost me like $1,000 a year to have an iPhone... Joys of filming outside. Thank you. Anyway, like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that it would cost me over three grand over three years to have the iPhone, I could probably push aside the part where I said that I don't need one. It's the uh, it's the three thousand dollars thing that really kind of does it for me. Look guys, I hate to do this, but something's come up that I got to address here, so I'm going to have to wrap this episode up quickly. I was going to talk about an experience of my first time ever drinking as the main story of this episode, but unfortunately I'm not going to have time to do that in this one, so uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. My name is Brian Langell. Thank you for watching episode number 43 of The Langell Show. You can check it out at thelangellshow.com and youtube.com. If you follow me on Twitter, and I promise you I'm going to be logged in a lot more often now, you can check me out at twitter.com slash langell or twitter.com slash thelangellshow. Uh, yeah, like I said, I do apologize. I thought I had more time than I did, but something's come up and i got to go. So... Check out episode 44, which will be out this weekend, and the whole main event of that story is going to be my first ever drinking experience. Until then, have yourselves a good week, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.